So what I just did here was I just took all my clown white. Sorry, I don't know why I didn't talk earlier. <laughs> but I'm using Kryolan clown white here today. Which is what I will call my light clown face. Good old fashioned clown white. <clears throat> But I have different types of makeup depending on different types of day. If I'm going to be in my makeup all day long and all night long, I'll wear Ben Nye, which I refer to that stuff as a white tar. Um, good makeup. Holds up well. Gets into the cracks. Stays in. It's nice and bright white. Um... I love how quickly I can get into Krylon Clown White. Um, and most of all, how quickly I can get out of the Krylon Clown White. Getting into Ben Nye takes a little longer. takes a little longer to put on. takes a little longer to take it off. Um, but, again, it lasts a lot longer than the Krylon Well or... Jim Howell. Uh, if I'm only going to be at it for an hour or two, I'll wear Jim Howell. Just because it's so oily and it doesn't hold up on me as well. Um, today I've got a birthday party and going to go do a couple shows after. So I just need to be in it for a few hours. And what I'm doing here is just taking a good old fashioned baby wipe and stretching it over my finger. And just kind of cutting out the shapes that I need for my eyebrows, my nose. And then I'll and what I really like about the baby wipe is you can see how sharp of a line I got. I really don't have to do a whole lot to my nose to straighten it out. A lot of times I won't go back and touch my nose with a Q-tip or anything other than maybe to clean the inside out where the white is. Being a clown, I've been clowning for roughly about 30 years, and there's always tricks and tips somebody can learn to help better themselves. As you've seen there, I just put a Q-tip in my mouth, got a little slobber on it, and what that does is help to sharpen my edges when I draw and keeps the q-tip tight and it also helps to wick away the makeup that might be left behind. You can use a dry q-tip if they're nice and tightly spun they'll work great and I find that the cheaper the Q-tip, the better they are for clown makeup. There we go. When in clown school, Frosty Little always told me when you start a line, start from one end and go till you're broke. 
And the reason being for that is you don't get start and stop areas in your white that you have to go back and try and correct. <clears throat> and typically I'm able to get nice sharp lines and I don't have to outline. It's important to get all that color out of there. Now, if I was gonna be in it for a long duration and I was gonna be wearing my bed and eye or vice versa, I would stop where I'm at and I would use the super white powder from bed and eye. And I would totally do all my white and get it all powdered. I would press the white in, the powder into my cracks and creases and I would let it sit on my face for a good three, three to five minutes. But today I'm gonna to do my makeup all at one shot and powder once. And excuse me for a second. Grabbing a piece of tissue or a paper towel and just wiping my brush off to get it all nice and clean and get that edge of my brush nice and sharp. There's the camera. And so what that does is allows me to take and get a nice sharp line. And I've typically found that I'm right-handed so I'm better off to start with my left eyebrow because I can copy my right eyebrow to match my left a lot easier. Now I just take that sharp edge of that brush and follow it right up to the white. See if you can see a little bit, I actually had an oops going over my white. Not a biggie. Just load that brush up and go right back over it. And then drag away all that extra makeup. I'll go back and finish filling in my eyebrow. And then just like I did with my white, I'll tap it out with the brush to even out all the blue makeup. Now to do the same on the other eyebrow to make it match.
one thing that's important with having a clown face is to find what works with your face. And once you find something that you're happy with and it works with your face, to stick with it. I can't mention how many people and how many clowns I know out there who will never look the same twice. It's really important to find a look that works for you and then to stick with it. And that way you gain repetition with your look and people know who you are, what you look like, and you're not a different clown every time you go out. I've had my clown face set since I was in grade school. I was one of the lucky ones that I just kept practicing and playing until I got it the way I was happy with. And I had some great mentors. along the line to help me learn. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm out of the mirror. I have a little too much on my brush, so I'm going to put it back on my lip there. As you can see with the brush. I get that nice sharp edge. <clears throat> and when I'm doing my makeup, I actually will take the jar and I'll work the makeup into my bristles so I don't have a big glob of makeup on the tip of my brush. Now I'll come back and add a little bit more and fill it in. The easiest way that I found to create or try and figure out your clown face, if you want to be a white face, to take a black and white photo, uh, size it up to an 8x10, get a sheet protector, or get it laminated, and then you can draw on the picture with a dry erase marker or something that's able to be wiped off and kind of get an idea of what works for your face that way before you go and start slapping makeup on not knowing what you're going to do or how you're going to do it kind of gives you an idea of what to work for and what you're working with something i didn't know how know to do when i first started i started off putting makeup on drawing it out wiping it off starting over again There's a real difference between Halloween makeup 
and professional theatrical makeup. I mean, I can't stress the differences of the difference between quality wise. This Halloween makeup is only meant to be worn for a little while. And it's typically made out of a wax and not the proper types of makeup. There we go. It's either made out of a wax or it's made to be a water base so that if you could just wash it off with soap and water. The uh, problem with that is, is you can't really eat with it on. You can't drink with it on. And if you sweat, you're going to lose it. With using a grease paint, after you set it with the powder, it's locked on your face until you take it off. And what I'm doing here is just working that red into the cracks of my lips so that there's not just parts that are covered and there's parts that aren't. Now I'm going to hit that edge. So now I got my colors on. Now what I need to do is look at my fingers and make sure I don't have any colors on my fingers. And I'll take a little bit of my white from down at the bottom of my neck and I'll re-tap out my eyelids. Because opening and closing them, you can see on this side that it's all wrinkled. And I lost my makeup there. And now what I need to try and do is not open my eyes a whole lot and this is what they call Ben Nye neutral set powder this is one that you could use for pretty much everything or any color so what i'm going to do is i have a black powder sock that doesn't have any lines or anything in it and the reason i use a black is i know that it's safe for my colors so i'm going to hit my eyes real quick here Now that I got my eyes, I'll just take my sock and I'll just lightly hit my, my color. Before I go and hit the rest of my white. Now where I have wrinkles, notice I'm taking that powder and I'm really pressing it in there around the wrinkles of my eyes my laugh lines the corners of my mouth
And what I do while I set a powder on my hands is I'll go feel. Oh, see, I can tell I have a sticky spot on my white right there. Now normally I would let this sit for a few minutes, but for now I'm going to go ahead and knock the powder back off just with a powder brush. This is a goat hair brush, the best powder brush ever, but you could use a blush brush from a beauty store or a theatrical shop. And then you're good to go. Now, if you don't like the chalky finish right away, you can take a wet washcloth um, with cold water and lightly dab your face. Um, there's upsides and downsides to it. Upside is it brings the color out immediately. Downside to it is it makes your makeup less durable for the whole day. So what I usually do is just let the oil from my skin come through the makeup and set it from the back side to the front side of my makeup. And once that happens, the oil pops through and it sets my color the rest of the way. The only thing I will do periodically is I will get a bunch of powder on the bottom of my lip and I'll just dab a little bit of water on my lip to get that that crease of powder taken off and then I always take a towel and just brush off my shoulders and arms and then go put on the rest of my suit and head out for the day now to take it off depending on your skin again you can either use a baby shampoo you can use baby oil um, my preferred method is a makeup remover um, from the costume shop that seems to cut through it the best and not leave my skin as greasy and nasty afterwards. And then I use a baby shampoo and wash my face the rest of the way and then a bar of soap or whatever afterwards just to kind of take the rest of that out of my face. So hope this helped and I hope you have a great day and hope to see you out there clowning.